Klay Thompson dropped a season and game best 21 points in 22 minutes. A 19-year-old phenom in Kaminga graced the starting five. Air Canada Andrew Wiggins continued to play like an all-star, and Stephen Curry splashed four of his patented triples, finishing as a game-high plus 21. The Warriors' big three without Draymond of Curry, Thompson, and Wiggins is a nightmare-inflicting trio to envision dealing with. The Splash Brothers are elite on both ends of the floor, being extremely underrated defensively, and A. Wiggins is an explosive athlete who doesn't get enough credit for his high IQ and overall contributions to winning basketball. This video, we're going to go into the film room as you'll see an in-depth breakdown of the offensive play sets where Klay Thompson's impact was sorely missed, and stay tuned to see the other main factors for why Golden State is back in business. Right quick, only 11.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a huge difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. No matter which team you cheer for, it's very respectable that after such a prolonged absence, one of the greatest shooters of all time has almost instantly resembled his old self. For Klay Thompson, directly coming off of two significant lower leg injuries and about three years away from competing in any sort of meaningful basketball, us fans wouldn't have been stunned if he showed any sort of decline. If Klay wasn't the unrelenting off-ball mover and general chaos creator he once was, it would have been understandable. Merely spotting up on the weak side and spacing the floor out would have been great to witness in itself. Thompson's presence would get rid of an extra opposing defender who was focused on the primary action and would prevent additional help defense. Dubs Nation would have been fine with Clay looking around 70 to 80% of what he was pre-injury. All that mattered was if Thompson still had his patented sweet shooting stroke and pure jumper that's quite possibly the most fundamentally sound textbook and overall perfect shooting trigger in the history of our game. Adding that type of player would do wonders for an offense that started out blistering hot, but is currently nosediving towards mediocrity in a small sample size of just five games this year. Thompson's averaging 15.2 points on 38-36-100 shooting splits. Given his true shooting percentage is at 51.5%, several points below the league average, the efficiency hasn't really been there. His shot from beyond the arc is just slightly above league average, understandable for someone who's yet to get his full legs underneath him. He's attempted more threes than twos, and on those twos, he's currently shooting just 39.4%. To be fair, most of those shots consist of mid-range jumpers, which are also highly dependent on his legs regaining strength and energy. Against the Pistons, Clay had his best performance yet with a game-high 21 points on 6 for 13 shooting from the field, 3 of 5 on 2s, 3 of 8 on 3s, and a perfect 6 of 6 free throws and 67.1 true shooting while also tallying 4 dimes. On this possession, Thompson displays why his value as a floor spacer was utterly missed. The Pistons mistakenly shift their zone to the weak side and helped by Gary Payton II cutting through and then moving to the other side of the floor, that gives Clay every bit of space he needs for a practice jumper. Spot-up shooting has come to be the focal point in Thompson's game early on. That's become a base expectation from Steve Kerr. The true measure of Clay's recovery offensively has been his ability to let jumpers fly on the move, particularly working off down screens. Another great sign is that Thompson's constantly moving off the ball and reacting fluidly to how defenders are attempting to stop him. I know Clay isn't close to being in prime game shape. Fatigue still visibly affects his lower body, which is manifested through his first four games back, where his shots continually hit front rim. Having said that, conditioning is an easy fix as the man gets more minutes and reps under his belt. Already though, some of that wind is coming back to him. His legs are becoming more active and spry, plus the lift on his jumpers is getting closer to what it was before. Out of a sideline out of bounds play involving staggered screens at the nail, this particular jumper looks like vintage all NBA Thompson. While Clay made that shot look easy, that was an off balance, low key, nearly impossible shot to make. He catches the ball after running off a few staggered screens at the nail and releases a shot while drifting to his left. Few players in NBA history, let alone a player fresh off of rehabbing two lower leg injuries, are capable of doing that. According to Synergy, Thompson's managed to score 0.889 points per possession around screens on 23 shot attempts, a far cry from his 1.52 mark during the 2018-19 season and 1.98 mark during the 2017-18 season. While that isn't the best sign, it's far from a cause to be concerned. 
and it's not representative whatsoever of what he'll look like as the rest of the season plays out. As Thompson continues to ramp up the minutes and shooting reps, the Warriors increasingly have looked for opportunities to get him open for jumpers. An example of that has been through design sets that aim to place a defender on an island against Thompson and a screening partner. The offensive set on your screen is dependent on the man with the rock being able to draw attention to himself around an on-ball screen. In double drag sequences, putting Thompson as the first screener allows him and Kevon Looney to operate in an off-ball two-man game. Up to this point, isolating a lone defensive player against these actions has been the best option in terms of getting Thompson ideal looks. While he's slowly regaining his rhythm, Thompson's eruptions toward the basket have been more of an adventure. Rim pressure has never been his forte, as Thompson's never surpassed 22% in terms of rim frequency for his career. He's a very capable finisher, though, with a career-high finishing rate of 69% at the rim and only a career low of 59%. In 2021-22, on just nine attempts, he's only made three shots at the rim. However, Clay was getting easy looks in the restricted area, manipulating Detroit's defense on these possessions. Right here, things become unfair when Curry sets a back screen for Clay. Glue yourself to Clay for even a second, as my fellow Canadian Kojo does right here, and Clay's just able to get a commanding spot down low. That same thing happens when defenses top lock Thompson in order to prevent him from using staggered screens. A staple in the Dubs offense, a playset titled Motion Strong, which features staggered down screens for a man in the corner, allows Clay to just cut back door, shedding Cade Cunningham who misjudges the play. But attempting to get buckets at the hoop as a traditional on-ball shot creator, that's been more of a work in progress. Putting the rock on the deck and manufacturing shots for himself up close, while previously unusual for Thompson, whose self-creation has typically come on post-ups or short mid-rangers, is becoming more of a common sight. Clay's making the right decisions, drawing magnetic attention to himself, and dropping off passes to rollers in the dunker spot, or even kicking it out to shooters. That type of manipulation offensively isn't what Thompson is accustomed to. He usually manipulates defenders while being off the ball, but he's showing flashes of being a playmaker and creator as the ball handler, which could really elevate the Warriors' offense. While it's amazing that one three-time champion in Klay Thompson's back and performing like his old self, conversely, the disappointment of another three-ring king in Draymond Green going down just as Thompson got back almost outweighs the excitement of Klay returning. Us NBA fans weren't merely looking forward to the prospect of the second Splash Brother being activated from the disabled list, but seeing the Warriors at 100% is what we were really all waiting for. With Dre's calf injury not being reevaluated for another 14 days, that wait continues. It's an open question as to whether or not Thompson will have as many on-ball reps once Draymond Green returns. Green's absence may have required Thompson to be more of a playmaker and shot creator, whereas with Green, he's there to direct the offense with his passing. Thompson being off the ball is probably going to become the more prudent choice, as it was during the heyday of the dynasty. Thompson has seen an uptick in his minutes, while he was limited to 20 minutes during his first three outings, he was allowed close to 23 against the Minnesota Timberwolves and ended up playing slightly above 22 minutes against the Pistons, which definitely would have been more had the game not been a blowout. The ramp up is slow and steady, and so is Thompson's return to his past form. The glimpses are most certainly there, and once the man gets into a 30 plus per game minute flow, it's officially scary hour in the Bay Area. Of course, Green remains out, but Steph Curry and Gary Payton II return to the lineup versus Detroit. Steph's boasting a career-best 103.1 defensive rating, which barely leads the near-first-time champ in 2021 Chris Paul among all NBA point guards this year. Steph's also top 20 in steals and top 30 in deflections. Coach Steve Kerr spoke on Chef's underrated defense back in late November, saying, quote, Everyone obviously locks in on his offensive brilliance, which they should, but he had six deals on Sunday, eight deflections, he's all over the place. For whatever reason, he has a reputation of being a poor defender. I don't see that at all. I think he's a really good defender, and he's been great defensively. End quote. Along with his defense, another underrated aspect to Curry's game is the man's off-ball movement. Steph's known for his ability to pull up from 30 when working off the dribble, but it's how he runs prolific routes away from the basketball using pin downs to his full advantage that's an ability which is just as dominant as Curry's spot up or pull up shooting. After dropping three of their past five games, the Warriors got back on the right side of the scoreboard on Tuesday, taking down the Detroit Pistons 102-86 in a game where they led by as many as 34. 
the Warriors gave Jonathan Kuminga a nice reward for his recent stretch of good performances with a start for the injured Draymond Green. Andrew Wiggins led the charge early, starting 4 of 5 from the field and helping the Dubs build up a 26-13 lead. It was an incredibly nice effort from the two-way Wigs, who utilized the gravity provided by the Splash Brothers to have a highly efficient game while also playing some intense perimeter defense. Just like Steph is the most valuable stopper at point guard, Andrew Wiggins is also number one among players at his position in defensive rating, ranking just ahead of Boston's Jason Tatum, Phoenix's Mikael Bridges, and LA's LeBron James. But back to Tuesday night, where Stephen Curry finally began breaking out of his shooting slump, going two of two from three in the first quarter. Then, the Splash Brothers came back together in the second and gave the NBA a quick reminder of why the Warriors went to five straight finals and also why they could do it again this year. Thompson and Curry combined for 20 points in the second quarter while Golden State locked up the Pistons defensively. Kaminga continued struggling with fouls but also didn't waver defensively. Wiggins, though, was the defensive star. He received the toughest perimeter assignment against Pistons point guard Cade Cunningham. Wiggins recorded three steals, a block, and helped limit Cunningham to 30% shooting. By half, the Dubs were already up by 28 and were able to put things on cruise control from there. They cruised to a 16-point win without a single player scoring more than 21. Curry posted 18 points, 8 dimes, 3 steals, and 3 rebounds. Kaminga picked up some buckets in garbage time, but was impressive on the glass, finishing with 12 points and 10 boards. Curry jammed his finger trying to catch a pass in the third quarter. He toughed it out with seemingly not too much difficulty, but went to the locker room and returned to the bench with tape on his left index finger in the fourth. Initially, it did look like a serious injury, and it's something to watch. The Warriors' homestand continues on Thursday, January 20th, where they host the Indiana Pacers. But in your opinion, where was Klay Thompson missed the most? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Joey F, who says honestly the Bulls should be worried. There's a ton of things that they've done extremely bad the past couple games that don't involve players being in and out of the lineup. Be sure to pause to read the rest of Joey's take, it was an interesting one. I hope you have a great day, this was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.